To the less tolerant folks of that great Southland, this may make you happy. You might think it's grand. I've gone back to where I came from and I'm staying here at least. That's the plan. Call it my motherland voyage, reverse migration. Of all the things calling me back to this small island nation, the most apt may simply be self-investigation. Who am I? What am I? And where do I belong? Can I learn the local lingo? Shall I sing the sacred songs? For the longest time, I wondered what it would feel like to lose all side of land, be completely surrounded by deep blue ocean, immersed. Having nearly drowned as a child, I didn't have the best relationship with the sea, yet there was this determination to travel that way. At just three weeks young, I was first cradled into the sky, off to family relations from my birthplace of Dubai. Not long after we settled in Sydney, Australia, we were fleeing stolen status, not war or threatening behaviour. Regular family holidays gave temporary tastes of my motherland. The smells, sights and sounds planted the seeds of a strong desire to stay in Sri Lanka. Eldest child of first generation migrants, raised in a relatively intolerant scene, but slowly you rise above and follow your dreams, a simple seasonal life with rewarding choices, flourishing under poverty lines, stories sung, many voices. For over five years I've been housed by people just like you, social accommodation, mutual exchange with shared views. Then it came time for the journey of a lifetime, departing Australian shores, no life raft, no lifeline. The feeling was surprisingly calm with no land in sight, the intense part was the two-man small boat struggle and it played out like a slow psychological torture. Stuck in that small space for nine days, running low on fuel and drinking water. That immense challenge I wish not to repeat. Searching, searching, overland on my own steam. Could it really be such a mission to realise this dream? Looking for a ride, taking failure in my stride. I had a vision, a calling, and it wasn't about the money. A six-hour flight will always cost less than six months travelling the old way. Although I lived very cheaply on the road, the trip took twice as long as my longest estimate, so my savings were significantly sliced. Eventually, I departed Thailand on sailing vessel Blue Star with a stellar captain and crew. The final passage was dreamy beyond belief. Eleven days with fabulous food, singing songs to the seas, dancing with the dolphins, and sleeping on deck in the breeze. Befriending fishermen and swapping supplies, reading books, writing songs, and sailing into endless skies. In my three months here, I've searched, researched, travelled and connected with amazing teachers who can guide me with my classical vocal studies, language lessons and Hatha yoga practice. I've been in a very vulnerable space, slowly finding out what it is to dress, behave and speak like a Sri Lankan. I'm learning my people's language for the first time as an adult. I've begun some of my classes and the savings are trickling down. I filled up the tanks in Australia performing, teaching and doing what I love. I've sailed into the port, secured my provisions, found my sources. Can you help me refuel?